Praise the Lord. Well, we want to continue uh, this evening on the supernatural church. This is part two, the supernatural church, part two. And tonight's uh, message would be power to change, power to change. God has equipped you and I with power to change. It's not our power, it's his power. We have to clarify that. A lot of times when we're talking about walking in authority, walking in power, we have to understand it is God's power residing in man, in those that have given their heart to Jesus, those that want more of him, those that are filled with his spirit, those that act out of that power, it is all from him. It's not, it's not us. We have to realize that right away. There's no glory given to us or to man. It all comes from God. Now, Luke chapter 10, let's turn there tonight and we'll kick this off. Luke chapter 10, this was part of our first part message. It's been a few weeks since I've been able to kick up on this again, but I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to talk about the supernatural church for a, a few weeks. We'll just see where this goes. I always allow God to lead, and he's the one who we need to listen to. Amen? If, if nothing more comes from the message, then it ends. And we move on to something else that he gives us. But that's how we work. It's, I'm no different than you. You come and hear a message. Well, I have to hear from God a message. And so I, I put that, I work on that message. And that's what I put down. And I believe, and I have to believe by faith that what he's giving me is what's for you. And that has to be done by faith. But, you know, you're, you're putting, a, as a pastor, you're putting all these hours into this message. And I have to believe that the work I'm, and the studying and the compiling of notes and this and that is all part of what God has for you. And, and I have to, by faith, trust that, you know? And, and I think sometimes we can miss it as pastors. We can put together a message and think that's for that Sunday or that Wednesday or that Sunday night and get here and, and begin to speak on the message and all of a sudden it kind of just like dry as, dry as what? What would we? Dry as a bone. <laughs> I don't want my bones dry. My bones are fat in Jesus' name. That's what the Word says. <laughs> Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power. Everybody say power. Power. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Say, over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing. And nothing. Say nothing. Nothing, nothing. nothing by, shall by any means hurt you. Man, if we could just grab a hold of that. What if something bad happens? Either this is true or it's not. See, that, listen, on Tuesday nights at Fellowship Cafe, we're talking about, remember what we're talking about, Richard? Let faith be your lifestyle. We're talking about let faith be your lifestyle at Fellowship Cafe. What we're trying to do is instill faith in the folks to be able to believe God. So that when things happen, first thing we do is not go, oh, what are we going to do? But the first thing we do is we don't panic because... On the inside, I've realized I have a relationship with a God who loves me, cares about me, he already knows that this was going to happen, and I'm able to fully trust in his word, knowing that, hey, when everything in the smoke, the smoke is gone, the dust settles, right? Nothing, by any means, is going to hurt me. In other words, if, even if something has happened, I'm coming out of it. I don't care if it means changing, changing substance. Substances have to change. Material substance will have to change them. Finances will have to change them. Physical bodies will have to change them. Circumstances and situations will have to change and line up to what God has promised me. To the man and woman and child that dares to believe what God has said. These are truths that are more real than anything else in this world. Excuse me. One of the definitions for the word power, behold, I give you power. In the Greek, the power to rule or government. Now, man, when I heard this, it was like, wow, God, this is... That's one of the words for power. Behold, I give unto you power, the power of him, talking about God, whose will and commands, whose will and commands? God's. Whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. 
Wow. That's power. Everybody wants power. People that don't know God, they want power. People are made, we're designed, the human being is designed with its intricacy. Every cell, the way our fibers and our minds think, the way God fabricated our minds and our abilities to comprehend, our abilities to understand and to glean knowledge and grow in wisdom is all in a search to have power, power over our circumstances. We don't want to see ourselves fall. We don't want to see ourselves make mistakes. God has put within us the ability to have power, but it's of Him, not of our own doing. There's so many people out there, you know, New Age, uh, all these other type of things where people are grasping it, trying to find a way without God to have power. And the true power comes from God. We'll talk about this in our next, our next message. We're going to be talking about God being a supreme being in the order, the supernatural order of things. The way things are laid out, supernatural. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, it's the way it is. And we'll be talking about some of that. It's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to that. We're talking about a supernatural God who empowers you and I with a supernatural power. These others that it's talking about in this definition, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. Listen, it's not people. So we're, it's not like God gives us power so that we can manipulate and puppet people and make them do what we want them to do. That's not what he's talking about. We're, our motivation must be love. The Christian church has to be motivated. The supernatural church is a supernatural church that's motivated by love. It has to be motivated by love. Supernatural God empowers us to be a supernatural church, and we have to be motivated by love. Love is the key. <clears throat> and we have to realize it's God's love that's behind it. These others as not people, though eventually it will trickle down and affect people and society as a whole when the people of God are operating in God's power and in God's faith. In other words, when I'm using my faith to do the will of God, yes, that it's going to trickle down. It's going to trickle down and begin to change people's ways of doing things and society. And one nation under God can change nations, and it did. This country was founded under God, one nation under God. And we sent out missionaries all over the earth, the largest missionary sending country in the world, and it impacted nations. Already has done that. So it's a reality that God's power can change others and nations and can do that. But right here in this scripture in Luke 10, he's talking about this power he gave us to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's what he's talking about. And we'll pick this up in Ephesians 6.12. He gives us a, a show of this in Ephesians 6.12. What's it say? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's not people that we're wrestle as against, right? It's not because your boss got mad at you today. It's not him. We've got to see beyond the person because that makes me able to love the person even though they might hate my guts at that moment. They might wish me dead. They might wish they never see my face again. I heard five people say amen. No. <laughs> but that can happen, and yet, when I understand what God's trying to say in his word here about this power he's given me, he's given me power to be able to look past that. That's power too. See, it takes great power to not retaliate when someone does you wrong. It's easy to act immediately out of the flesh and respond to what a person says. But it takes great power to be able to withhold your temper, be able to withhold your tongue and only speak love or not say anything. Just realize, okay, it's not the person. That's the enemy trying to get at me. They're not my enemy. I'm to love them. I see where this is coming from and it's not going to win. I'm not going to feed that. I won't give it power. Because see, the enemy wants to take your power. He wants to take the power you have from God and twist it so it can be used for evil instead of good. We don't have to let that happen. Amen? Praise the Lord. And this is a church that's not going to let it happen. Glory to God. We war against... Look what he says. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> we war against seen and unseen forces, spiritual entities. We have to contend with these natural, the natural course of this world with its laws and nature, but God would have you to know that we have been given victory over them all in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what he's saying in Luke 10. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. We looked at this the last time. Luke 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father, Jesus is speaking, upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Power from on high. Now this word we looked at the last time, the word in endued actually meant to be clothed upon. Remember? Anybody remember that? To be clothed upon. But it wasn't just as wearing a garment, but that literally the garment melted into you. So it was something that was permanently done. In other words, God puts his power into his people. But then a lot of time we're walking around never using it because we don't understand it and we don't know what, how, to, how to function in it. So we never do anything with it. Yet you still have it within you. It's been put there. We are clothed. What are we clothed with? Power. Everyone say, I am clothed with power. Clothed with power. Amen. The word power in the Greek is the word dunamis. We could say dynamite in English. Inside of us is dynamite power. Explosive energy. Full of God. This dunamis means strength, power, ability, inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts or puts forth power for performing miracles. What's he saying? We've been clothed with inherent power. Everybody say power. power. Well, we're getting about a quarter volume now. <laughs> One of the meanings for inherent is the word indwelling. We have been clothed with indwelling power. In other words, it's a power that indwell, it dwells within us. It's separate from us, but yet it's a part of us. God in man, Emmanuel, God with man or with us is God. With us is El, God. God is with us. He's in us. He's separate from us, but yet he's in us and a part of us. We're united with him in our spirit. We have an indwelling power on the inside. When you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in. Now, the degree of that power depends on you and how much you want of God. There's more degrees of, of power to be available to us. We can be filled with the Spirit. And over uh, baptizing, an overflowing of power that can come upon a person. Acts 1.8 said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. To be a witness means to be like Jesus. In other words, you're just, you witness what he did, and people see that same witness in you. You're acting just as if it was him on the earth. And how are you doing that? Through this inherent indwelling power he's placed on the inside of us. That's the supernatural church. A supernatural nature resides and indwells in us. Glory to God. Boys, if we could grab a hold of that. Now, what happens is we don't see it. We don't feel it. So most of the time, we get up every morning and we don't even realize God's in us. That his spirit is actually living in us. We, don't even, we, we just basically live life as if, you know, there's God. He's on his throne way up there and we know Jesus is seated at the right hand. And that's about it. Some people don't even, you know, they don't even think God even cares about them. They might even give in their heart to the Lord. And, and God's in them. And they're walking around thinking God's way up there, and they're way down here, and he doesn't care a, little, a stinking little bit about me. And all the time, he's not just with us, but in us. And in us is this power 
Another, it's kind of like, how could we liken it to? Well, when you go <clears throat> and eat a meal, that meal, the reason we're eating it, it's not just because it's chips and all this other junk. We're eating a meal to give our body energy, strength. We have to eat in order to receive strength, nourishment, nutrition from that meal. And then that, that nutrition feeds our body so that it's able, capable to do what it's supposed to do. Well, the same thing spiritually. We have to feed on God's Word. God's Word has supernatural ability in it, has power in it. And as we feed on God's Word, it feeds our spirit and it builds on the inside of us. God's power residing in us through His Word and through His Spirit in us. And that, that helps so that what? So that my spiritual man stays healthy and strong. <clears throat> Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Second Peter, chapter 1, 1 through 4. <clears throat> Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power, everybody say power, power. his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us unto glory and virtue. Thereby, thereby what? Thereby, by the power that he's given unto us, thereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. What's he talking about? What great and precious promises? In his word. The great and precious promises that are in his word. That by these great and precious promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature. He's talking about God's divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. <clears throat> that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature in the Greek means the nature of things, the force, the laws, and the order of nature. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, His nature comes inside of you. Through God's Word, you have more understanding of this nature that's been placed within you. Listen, what did he just say? Thereby are given unto us great and precious promises. He's talking about the promises that are in the Word of God. Why? Because as I find out these promises, that by these promises, it, it allows me to be able to partake of more of the divine nature that God's placed within me. God's put His power in me and in you, and the more I see it, the, the Word of God, listen, this is an instruction book. This is trying to show us what's in us. Does it not? Huh? In Christ, this and that. There's all kinds of in Him scriptures that tells us what we are in Him. Greater is He that's in us. Well, this power that's in us, we're walking around like there's nothing in us and we don't even know it. The reason we don't know it is because of this. We don't know this. This is the guidebook, the instruction book to how to operate this, the power. Amen? The promises, listen, isn't that what he's saying here? That by these, thereby are given unto us exceeding great, precious promises. That by these things, by these promises, by this word of God here, you, you can partake of what? God's divine nature, the nature of God that he put in you. So that you could be like him, not him, but be like him. You could be Jesus on the earth to people. His love, his power, his compassion. Through God's word, you understand how to be able to unlock the power within. God's power in you, not ours. It isn't us, nothing to do with us. Our part's to believe God and his word. And that begins to, and then act it out, and it begins to release the power that's in us. God, the Holy Spirit, he wants to work through you in you and through you 
into the folks around you. Amen? And he'll do that if we can believe that. Praise the Lord. This new nature, God's divine nature, is his force, his laws, his order of nature. Listen, laws, government, order of nature, we're talking about a government here. We're talking about the kingdom of God that lives within us, Jesus said. The kingdom is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. The laws in, that govern that kingdom are totally different than the laws that govern our earth. And these laws that govern the kingdom of God in us are more real and they're more powerful and they can change the laws of this earth. I'm not talking about changing man's laws. I'm not talking about going against rules and authority. We're not to do that. What I'm talking about is when the enemy comes and different things come into your life, God has given you his power in you. It's him in you. And when you can begin to exert, God give you authority to say something, to speak. That's why we speak and animals don't. We've been given power to speak. So that Why? So that it releases the power in us to be able to change things the way God would have it to be. You're bringing his will into the earth. It's his desire that heaven come to earth. The great prayer, we've said it a million times. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is where? <clears throat> in heaven. The will of God is for heaven. The, 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 everything going on in heaven, healing and uh, the meeting of needs. There's no need for clothing as far as the needs are met. Everything's met. There's no lack of food. There's no lack of money. Everything is in abundance. It's, relationships are harmonious. In that same thing that's up in heaven, God wants it to be on earth. And, and that's, and listen, Jesus, first thing, one of the first things he said, Luke 4, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he sent me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. Huh? That's what he came to do, to preach the good news to the poor. Listen, God in me wants to touch you and lift you up and put himself in you so then you can turn around and you can reach your friend and neighbor and lift them up and fill them with, you know, let God fill them and then turn around and they reach their neighbor and so forth and so on until it brings people out of all the stuff that the devil has got them into. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God's this new nature, God's divine nature, is His force, His laws, His order of nature, and they supersede spiritual forces and natural forces or natural laws, and all this is done through God's Word, His precious promises that through these, in faith, spoken through us, release God's inherent indwelling power to change everything. This is reality. This is more real than any of the reality shows that are on TV today. Praise the Lord. Huh? Pretty soon we'll have to have one, you know, that demonstrates the reality of God in the earth. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power. That means the power of God to whose will and commands must be submitted by, the, uh, by others and obeyed. Glory to God. There are faiths that believe all who profess Jesus Christ need to be eliminated. And they're trying their best to do that. But we have to know our God. Those that know their God. What are they going to do? Huh? They'll do exploits. God never intended for us to sit back and whimper and whine and lay down and die and let somebody come and kill you. When, when you've got him in you and you've got a force in you that is not to be reckoned with. I remember a pastor, David Hogan, from South America. What a, a wild man of a pastor. We ought to all be like him. And he was just, he's ferocious in the faith. <clears throat> when they were trying to get his daughter, when they were trying to, they surrounded a city that his daughter was in, and the, 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 the rebels, they had surrounded a city, and he was outside the city, he'd gone somewhere, and he'd come back, and, and they're closed off the city. Nobody can come in. And, and these guys are bad news, and they're like, they'll do whatever they want to do, and nobody's going to stop them. And he'd already made up his mind, if, 
if, if they don't let me in tomorrow morning, then I will go in. And I will come out with my daughter. And she will be alive and so will I. Because that's the will of God. See, you've got to know the will of God, which is his word. And these precious promises are what are going to allow the understanding of the power God has placed within us to be able to be used for God's glory. God gets no glory when gunmen come in and kill the Christians. That does not glorify God. No, what glorify God is when the gunmen come in to kill the Christians and the Christian stands in front of them and says, in the name of Jesus, go! And the guns fall out of their hands and they run for their lives. That brings God glory. Because that's the power that you and I have been given. That's, the, that's reality. That's reality. The days are going to come. You're going to need to know how to operate in God's power. You're going to need to. Or you won't be on planet Earth. <clears throat> Let's go to Hebrews 11.3. Hebrews 11.3. We looked at this scripture not too long ago. I'll look at it again. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by what? What framed the worlds? Word of God. If you were framing up a house, you would use lumber, right? Somebody has to be the one that puts the lumber together and puts the nail gun to work or the hammer, right? Got to be somebody. The house don't build itself. Someone's building the house. If they're framing it up, somebody's framing it. Got to be a person involved, some type of entity involved. Well, through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It wasn't made of something you can see. Everything we see was made from something you cannot see. See? And this is what we have to understand. See? <laughs> we have to be able to have vision to see what we can't see, which is these promises in God's Word, that they're more real than what you do see, which can be cancer, fatigue, uh, whatever's going on, loss of job, you know, trouble making the mortgage payments, whatever. You've got to be able to see that what you couldn't see, everything, yeah, look at this, everything is subject to the divine nature on the inside of you. Let me say this again. <clears throat> if all things were created or framed by God's word, then all things are subject or must come under the submission and obey that word. God places his supernatural power inside of us so that he can accomplish everything he wants to through us. All he needs is your cooperation. All he needs is someone who will dare to believe. Dare to believe and release his divine nature that's been placed in you. Everything is subject to that divine nature. It is. Wasn't it with Jesus? Didn't he walk around and whatever had to be done was done? Got to pay the taxes this month. Well, actually, ours will come up in May, right? Got to pay the taxes. Property taxes? May. Everybody say May. May, that's when your taxes are due. They're broken up into two sections, right? May and what? December. All right, well, in May, your taxes are coming up, whether you like it or not. <laughs> they start in December, and May's the last payment. Okay. So, but taxes are coming up in May, right? Taxes are coming up. Taxes came up during Jesus' time while he was walking around with, and he had Peter with him. And so they came and said, doesn't your master pay tribute tax? And, and Peter's like, hmm, and uh, hmm. So Peter starts heading for the house. He's going to go get some money to pay the taxes. But it says, in one of the, one of the gospels, it says, Jesus prevented him. He prevented him from going in the house. And then he asks the question. He says, do the king's kids pay taxes? And he's like, no. And then he goes, well, nevertheless, so we don't offend them, go down to the water, throw your hook in. The first fish comes up, open its mouth. There's our tax money. Was there worry involved? Fret? Anxiety? Pressure? 
Hmm? Got to pop some pills because I'm under such anxiety attacks from the devil because I'm going to lose my home. No, see, it's a whole different operation. It's a whole different way of thinking, a whole different way of living. The Christian life, people have got to open their eyes to the truths of God's word and begin to operate in it. Because God's coming back for a glorious church that's filled with his power and passion. Tell me, the world has not seen true believers yet. Not in the manifestation of Jesus, but they will. They will. It's going to happen. Because God is preparing pastors' hearts to grab a hold of these words and begin to understand. Understanding is coming more than ever before of the Word of God. We're in, a, we're in a time of knowledge, of increase of knowledge. Not just earthly knowledge. If there's an er increase of earthly knowledge, and we know it already started back in, what, the 40s, roughly, there's an increase in spiritual knowledge just as well. They parallel side by side. If there's going to be increase here, there's going to be increase here. And so the church has to be aware of this and step into it. We're meant to step into these things. Praise the Lord. The taxes are due in May. But I don't have to fret. Why? Because I know God in me is going to take care of it. My trust is in him. Peter started getting nervous. I'm going to go in the house and get the money to pay the taxes. Jesus prevented him. And he says this to him. What do you think, Peter? He says, the king's kids, do they pay taxes or are they free? And he's like, they don't have to pay anything. They're free. See what he's trying to get at to understand? You're my kids, God's saying. You're my kids. You're my kids. Everything I have is yours. Belongs to you. But you've got to know how to appropriate it. Right? You can have $500, and it can go a long ways if you know how to spend it right. Or it can last you one minute, and it's gone. Right? It's knowing how to appropriate it. God put within you and I power. And he wants us to learn how to appropriate it. Because when it's used right for his kingdom and glory, it can change our earth. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that within us you have put your divine nature. And Father, as we look at your word, as we begin to learn more about your word and understand who you are in us, those precious promises you've given us, Lord, to provide for us, to heal our bodies, Lord, to meet our needs, to take care of our jobs, take care of our families, to build relationships, restore relationships. Lord, all these different things and, those, and even things that I can't even uh, comprehend at this moment, Lord, all of those things are there, been given to us so that we can appropriate them in our lives and allow you to flow out of us. Lord, you have, you have placed your power within each one of us. And Lord, it's there for good. It's there to do good and to bring you glory. So Lord, as we continue this message series, we thank you, Lord, for giving us understanding. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to open our hearts. Let understanding and light... Trust me right now. Father in heaven, Father in heaven. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. I thank you that you have. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose again. I confess him as Lord. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Fill me with your spirit. Let me walk in your power. Show me what you want me to do. I give my life to you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, then I invited Jesus in. He is now your Lord and Savior. Find a good Bible-believing church, one that preaches the Word, one that teaches you how to believe God, and you're on a journey that will change the world around you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen.